The white man made you weak in America. The white man made you soft. That's why these men are scared to stand up for the word of God. That's why they stand out to the side, because you know what? The truth of God makes them change. We can't lean to our own understanding right. when it comes to God. This Bible is a book of instructions that we must follow. Right. You understand? So if we go outside this Bible, you will, might find out you're not worshiping God, but following the devil. Right. You're following Satan. You're following the ways of Satan if you go outside this Bible. Give me Proverbs 3 and 5. Yeah, but the only way you can learn about God, the only way that you can learn about God is through this Bible. We can't learn about God any other way. Questions? Proverbs 3 and 5. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Read out. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Jump down to verse 7. Verse 7. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Read that again. Be not wise in thine own eyes. See, we can't be wise in our own eyes. We can't sit there and think what we're doing is right. We got to go by what the Bible say, and that's it. Right. Because this is why we're here in captivity. This is why we're in the ghettos. Right. Because if we was wise in our own eyes, we wouldn't be at the bottom. Right. You understand? This is why we're getting oppressed. This is why we're getting shot down in the streets. This is why we're getting no justice, because just like the officer brought out first, was that, hey, we destroyed because we don't know God's laws. Right. The pastors didn't teach us God's laws. So now we all running around doing our own thing. We're not united as a people. We ain't came together. We ain't sat down to figure out how we're going to get out of these conditions. Right. Because we've been leaning on what? We've been trusting the same people that put us in oppression. We've been trusting the same system that they put up to teach us about God. We wouldn't let, know a damn thing about God if it wasn't for the Bible. Because you had to ask yourself, why we have we been worshiping this white man right here? Why have we been worshiping white Jesus? Because we didn't trust in what the Bible said. We trusted in what the pastors said. Your pastors put up an image of white Jesus in our churches, our, and guess what? Our mothers, our grandmothers, every single one of them put up an image of white Jesus in their house and taught that to their children. So when we ask people what color God is, or you ask any child, a child is gonna tell you the truth. They're gonna say that white one. They're gonna point to that white Jesus every time because that's what your mother, that's what your grandmother, and that's what you teach your children. We tell, we'll tell our children it don't matter what color Christ is. But at the same time, we got an image of white one up. We didn't go try to find a red one, or green one, or a blue one. When we say color don't matter, we always put up the white image of Jesus Christ, period. We're a people that's in a dead state. We're at the bottom. We don't know God. We don't know Christ. We don't know how to get salvation. Right. Think about it. This is a Bible, the book of the commandments of God. I'm going to ask you one simple thing. Watch this. I'm going to show you how much we destroy. Our people go to church every Sunday, but when we come out here and we ask our people one simple question, they never know the answer. How do we get to the kingdom of heaven? How? What's she saying? Yeah. yeah, okay. How do we get to the kingdom of heaven? Imagine this. See? Think about it. Shouldn't if everybody's, look, if I sit there and ask you what's one plus one, you're going to tell me two. Because you went to school, they taught you math. Right. They taught you how to add. But guess what? If you go to church, shouldn't they be able to tell you how to get to the kingdom of heaven? 
If you black, listen up. If you Hispanic, listen up. up. I'm going to teach you something that your pastors never taught you, and that is how to get to the kingdom of heaven. Right. Read. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may enter, I'm sorry, that I may have eternal life? So one came up to Christ, and he asked the simple question that all our people should be asking. How do I get eternal life? How do I get into the kingdom of heaven? That's what he asked Christ. Read. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. Christ lets you know there's only one good person, and that's God. Right. He that he's not God, he has a father. That's God. You understand? Read. That is God. But if thou will enter into life, keep. If you want to get eternal life, do what? Keep the commandments. Do what? Keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. That's how you get eternal life. You got to keep the commandments. But how can you ever get eternal life if you was never taught the commandments? Why would you keep going up to these churches that are not teaching you the commandments? They won't even teach you the day that you're supposed to worship God. They won't even teach you the day is the Sabbath, that you don't supposed to be doing no buying, no selling, no shopping, no work on the Sabbath day. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. So if you walk straight up in these stores, guess what? You're breaking the Sabbath. You're breaking the Sabbath. You Not only are you breaking the Sabbath, you don't know that you're supposed to keep the Sabbath. You know what you're doing? You're breaking all the commandments because you don't know the commandments. So you're going to stay in sin. You're going to stay at the bottom. God is not going to hear your prayers. He's not going to fight for you because you are disobedient. Why would God listen to disobedient children beg, ask him for things? You don't listen to your own kids when they're disobedient. You don't reward them for being wicked. You punish them. That's what happened to our people. God's punishment is called slavery. That's why we're here, because of our disobedience to God. But our people don't know that. They don't know that they, by our disobedience, is what keeps us at the bottom. I'm going to give y'all women a simple law that you don't know that, hey, you don't really understand that you don't made your oppressor your God. Your oppressor is now your God. Your oppressor is now your Christ. Because our people got white Jesus on the brain. You don't make the white man your God, your savior. Whatever he say goes. You follow what he say. You follow what he told you to do. Give me Deuteronomy 20, 25. This is something God commanded our women not to do. But our women sit here and do it because you know what they do? They follow their oppressor. Their oppressor said, this is a fashion. This is okay. And our people start doing it. But God said, don't do it. Watch this. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that was pretended unto a man. This is about a dress code. God is telling our people how to dress. He said a woman should not wear that that was pertaining to a man. Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. He said, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Neither should men wear women's clothes. Guess what? I guarantee y'all, every one of y'all understand that. Because would you allow your son to walk around with women's clothes on? Yes. All right, if you had one, would you allow him to walk around with women's clothes on? Let me ask you, sis, in the car. Would you allow your sons to walk around with women's clothes on? You would correct that in a heartbeat. You would correct that. You would be like, no, take that off. But watch this. Read it from the top again. The woman shall not wear that was pertaining unto a man. So a woman shouldn't wear men's clothing. Let me ask you, what is something that women wear that pertains to men? Pants. You dead right. All women wearing pants is cross-dressing. Right. 
That's cross-dressing. That's why y'all take on a manly spirit. You bucking up, being men faces, ready to fight. Hey, you out here in the streets scrapping like men. Period. Look at all our women now. Walking, hey, almost every job you go, they go with lead, a team lead, a supervisor, and they dykes. They dykes. Bring it up. They don't took on the spirit of a man. They don't gave up the spirit of femininity, being a woman. Right. Now all these women out here, it's, it's, it's now it's become norm. It's becoming norm. If you even speak against homosexuals, you can lose your job. Right. But I'm telling you, listen, if a man thinks he's a woman, something is mentally wrong with him. If a woman thinks she's a man, something is mentally wrong with her. But yet, they'll put them over you at your job and say, that's the lead. That's the example I want you to follow. Because your, your oppressor is wicked. Your oppressor wants us to fall. He don't want us to rule this earth. He don't want us to come back to the commandments of God. Right. When he says, although to keep those commandments should come to life, let me tell you, life is in rulership. That's right. Life is rulership. We'll come into the rulership of this earth if we follow God's commandments. But our people don't want to do that. Right. Our people want to buck up and go against God's commandments. So if you understand that wearing pants is uh, against God, matter of fact, read that last part. Let's see what God think about it. Read. Neither shall a man put a woman's garment, for all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. So all they that wear, all women wearing pants, all men wearing women's clothes, he said that's an abomination. Our men right now is the reason why our men are so soft and so weak is because they don't know God. Well, our men right now so got such a feminine spirit that you can't even talk to them like men. That's what our people are so weak. This is how God tells us to go out here and talk to our people. Read. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 1. Cry aloud. God said do what? Cry aloud. Now talk soft and weak. Cry aloud. God said cry aloud. Right. Cry aloud. Because he wants this word to go out to our people. That's right. He wants our men to stop being weak. Stop being soft. Right. We are lions. We ain't created, created to be weak. The white man made you weak in America. The white man made you soft. That's why these men are scared to stand up for the word of God. That's why they stand out to the side because you know why? The truth of God makes them change. They scared of change. They only want to be hard. They only want to be bad against another black man. But when this word of God comes out, it makes you look at your oppressor the way he should be looked at. Like he the damn devil that the Bible say he is. Read. Spare not. God said what? Spare not. You don't supposed to spare nobody's feelings. You're supposed to get on the raw, undecorated truth about this Bible. Period. What God say, that's what goes. We don't make this word soft for you to make you feel comfortable. The word of God don't supposed to make you feel comfortable. It's supposed to bring fear in you. Because you got to understand you've been violating God's laws and now you the, the payment for that is going to be death. Our job is to come out here and help raise our people up to save them from death. Read from the top again. Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. The Bible said lift up our voice like a trumpet. We ain't finna be soft. We ain't finna sit there and hold your hand because you a weak, soft, feminine man. Right. We're gonna sit there and do what God said. Read. And show my people. And do what? Show my people their transgression. We're supposed to show our people their sins. Right. We're supposed to tell them what sin they're in. Right. And the black man's scared to hear what his condition is. What he doing wrong. He don't want to change. He want to sit there and live in his sin. He want to sit there and think everything going to be all right. The black man is weak. Soft, and the reason why we're at the bottom because they won't stand up for God, they won't stand up for their women, they won't stand up for their children. And that's the damn truth. Right. The black man, when he want to show he got some power, he want to show that, hey, you know what? I'm not soft. Come and hear the word of God so yeah. you can learn how to get back rulership of this earth. But if you want to continue the way you are, stay being a damn slave because that's what you are now on this earth. You are a slave. Read. And the house of Jacob, their sin. We're supposed to show our people their sin so they guess what? So they can change. So they can change. So they can repent and come back in the rulership of this earth. Right. So hey, all you black men that say you love God, all you black men that say you love other black men, guess what? You should be standing front and center hearing the word of God. Right. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, Nothing's in vain. 
IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.